So here it is. We managed to get our hands on some of the latest desktop processors from AMD with their new Ryzen 7000 series. And we've had just about a couple of days or three with it. Goes without saying that we put it through the test. And we have to say that we've been pretty impressed thus far. As usual, the new Ryzen 5 seems to be the new sweet spot. Now before we get into things, let's do a short recap. AMD announced their new Ryzen 7000 series lineup of desktop processors earlier this month, and in particular, there will be four CPUs for the first launch. We have the Ryzen 5 7600X, Ryzen 7 7700X, the Ryzen 9 7900X, and the flagship Ryzen 9 7950X. These will all be made using the fourth generation FinFET technology featuring the new Zen 4 cores and will be using TSMC's 5 nanometer process. Additionally, this will also be the first time that AMD is going to use the 1718 LGA socket for the new AM5 platform for consumers, which is a drastic change from the usual PGA socket we are all familiar with, and there will be now an additional line of new motherboards for both the mainstream B series as well as the higher end X series in the form of the E suffix. So we will have the B650 and the B650E as well as the X670 and X670E. Furthermore, DDR5 is the only option going forward and AMD has also introduced a new open standard for memory overclocking in the form of Expo. Now we can really go on and on and on because there's so much more to cover with the Ryzen 7000 series but for today, let's just focus on the most important of factors. Namely speaking, we are going to talk about performance, efficiency, terminals and ultimately value. Is this going to be your next upgrade? So courtesy of AMD, they have provided two CPUs for us to play with, the Ryzen 9 7900X as well as the Ryzen 5 7600X. They have also provided the X670E Aorus Master ATX motherboard alongside 32GB of G-Skill Trident Z5 Neo DDR5 RAM running at 6000MHz with Expo. Now as for the rest of the kit, I do want to thank my good friend Zhu Cheng from the Tech Revolutionist here in Singapore for really coming in clutch at the last moment given how short a time we had to play with the new processors. He actually provided us with this very test bench equipped with the Cooler Master V850 80 Plus Go modular power supply and actually the Radeon RX 6800. Again, really appreciate it and definitely do check out his content over at his website because for them, they really do dive deep into this hardcore PC stuff which we've yet to really dive into. Really good stuff, definitely do check them out. Now in fact, he actually also provided us with this Cooler Master Master Air MA624 Stealth CPU cooler for testing but as you can tell, we don't have it rigged up. In fact, I actually had to rip out my own Corsair H150i Pro from my own rig instead to do the test. So, well, more on that later as the reason why. Lastly, we have 2TB of PCIe 3.0 SSD storage as our main drive to complete the whole setup. Once again, here's the entire list of parts for our test rig at a glance. For all our testing, they were all done on this open air test bench in a room with an ambient temperature of 24 degrees Celsius and for the AIO, the extreme profile was used via Corsair IQ, which sets all three fans to a 1400 RPM and a pump running just shy of 3000 RPM. With all that said, let's dive into the testing and all the performance metrics. First up are the creative and synthetic benchmarks, of which we start with Cinebench R20. For the Ryzen 9 7900X, it managed a score of about 11,000 and just under 800, while the Ryzen 5 7600X managed a score of roughly 6,000 and just about 750. Honestly, pretty impressive for the Ryzen 9 7900X as it already outperforms the Core i9 12900K which has 4 more physical cores. The Ryzen 5 7600X on the other hand does leave much to be desired but it isn't unsurprising either given its actual focus. In Cinebench R23, the Ryzen 9 7900X scored about 28,000 and 2,000 respectively, while the Ryzen 5 7600X did so at just shy of 15,000 and 2,000 respectively. Again, superb performance from the Ryzen 9 7900X, basically achieving very similar performance compared to the previous flagship Ryzen 9 5950X. As for the Ryzen 5 7600X, it does fall behind yet again, especially against its main competitor right now, the Core i5 12600K. But like we mentioned earlier, not unsurprising and as you will see, this trend will continue. 
We then ran a couple of tests on Blender, starting with the BMW scene, and the Ryzen 9 7900X managed to complete it in just 1 minute and 21 seconds, while the Ryzen 5 7600X managed it in just about 2 minutes and 40 seconds. Now we might be talking differences of mere seconds here, but the percentage do add up in longer sustained loads. Again, we see the Ryzen 9 7900X basically performing on par with the previous flagship, while the Ryzen 5 7600X trails far behind. The same is also true for the classroom scene, in which the Ryzen 9 7900X managed to render in just about 2 minutes and 55 seconds, and the Ryzen 5 7600X managed it in just about 6 minutes. The trend continues. Next, we ran 3D Mark Fire Strike. And the Ryzen 9 7900X did it with a score of about 37,000, just shy of 38,000, while the Ryzen 5 7600X did it with a score of about 36,500. Though, do take note that our scores aren't necessarily the best achievable out there, since we aren't using the best GPU available in the market right now. But this should still give you a good sense of where the new Ryzen 9 7900X and the Ryzen 5 7600X are kind of positioned, and a glimpse as to their strengths and weaknesses. Now we then move on to gaming performance, and this is where the Ryzen 5 7600X really shines. No matter the resolution, be it at 1080p, 1440p, or 4K, the Ryzen 5 7600X combo is able to basically output the same amount of frames in most titles compared to the Ryzen 9 7900X. Now the interesting thing to note here is that in games such as CSGO or Valorant, the Ryzen 5 7600X actually provides slightly more performance in comparison to the Ryzen 9 7900X. Though this is also highly dependent on the scene and the load, so do take that with a slight grain of salt. But to keep it simple, if you're just talking about gaming scenarios, the Ryzen 5 7600X is no slouch, despite having a slightly lower max single core boost clock as compared to the Ryzen 9 7900X. So we've already covered quite a bit, but there's still quite a lot more to go. And this next point is something that we were really interested in when we first heard about the announcement. With the new 7000 series, AMD has also introduced something called Eco Mode, in which any of the new processors can actually be set to a lower TDP. For example, the Ryzen 5 7600X has a 105W TDP design, but that can be brought down to 65W while the Ryzen 9 7900X with the 170W TDP design can be brought down to either 105W or 65W. For example, in Cinebench R23, the Ryzen 9 7900X at a full 175W TDP will achieve a score of 28,500, while at a 65W TDP state, that will drop to just shy of 24,000. The curve clearly isn't linear, but the most amazing thing about this would actually be the thermal performance. At the 470 watt TDP, the Ryzen 9 7900X will push 5.2 GHz on all cores at 92 degrees Celsius, while at the 65 watt TDP Eco mode, it will just push 4.3 GHz on all cores, which is much lower, but so are the temperatures at just about 50 degrees Celsius. The same goes for a task in Blender. The BMW scene takes about 1 minute and 21 seconds to render at the full 170 watt TDP while it'll just take slightly longer at 1 minute and 37 seconds at the 65W TDP Eco mode. But again, the temperatures are a huge difference. 5.2 GHz on all cores at 92 degrees Celsius against 4.3 GHz on all cores at just 50 degrees Celsius thereabouts. And if we move on to gaming performance, no matter the resolution, be it at 1080p, 1440p or even 4K, there is basically no difference at all between the two drastically different TDP states. This is honestly really exciting in our opinion, and especially compared to the competition from the likes of Nvidia or Intel, where they are constantly pushing power, it's really nice for a change, and with how AMD has implemented this system, it's going to be quite the benefit for those of us who's going to build an SFF build for a workstation or even gaming, but not needing to really buy those specific processor skills. And like we've shown, it still provides favorable performance as you would expect from a Ryzen 9 chip. At a 65W Eco mode, it will still outperform the Ryzen 5 7600X at 105W by a large margin. Like we said, we can definitely see much more compact and boutique SFF builds with workstation usage in mind, or even gaming without really going all crazy with the water cooling. 
Now as for the price, the Ryzen 5 7600X will retail for $299 US dollars, while the Ryzen 9 7900X will retail for $549 US dollars. If you're thinking of getting either one of them, you would definitely say that pairing the B650 or B650E motherboards with the Ryzen 5 would offer the most value while you would likely want to get the X670 or X670E if you're going to the Ryzen 9 options, especially for a workstation or more. As to whether or not you really should be thinking of upgrading, well, it really depends on you. If you're using the Ryzen 3000 series or 5000 series, you probably don't need to unless you really require some of the newer features that the 7000 series offers, such as AVX 512, PCIe 5.0 and more. If you're coming from the Ryzen 2000 series and before, however, it might be worthwhile to consider. If you're coming from Intel, that will ultimately depend on you, though we do have to wait and see what Intel 13th gen brings to the table. Now on that note, we do want to circle back to talking about the Cooler Master Cooler that we showcased in the beginning. Now at this point in time, AMD has definitely officially stated that AM5 is backwards compatible with AM4 coolers, and for the most part, that is true. Manufacturers do not need to redesign an entirely new bracket or mount just for AM5, as the Z height is kept identical. However, if you have an AM4 cooler that requires the removal of the integrated AMD backplate, it will likely not be compatible. And the reason for that is really simple. Due to the use of the new LGA socket design, the bracket for the socket actually screws in into that integrated AMD backplate. Which means something like this Cooler Master MA624 Stealth that uses Cooler Master's universal Intel and AMD backplate can't be used. It doesn't have the holes for the LGA socket bracket to screw onto. Thus, I had to rip out my own Corsair H150i Pro for testing as that uses the standard AMD clip-on design which is of no issues at all. So something to take note of, if you have an AM4 cooler that requires the use of the unique backplate that's designed for the cooler and it requires you to remove the integrated AMD backplate on your motherboard, it will likely not be compatible. So it will be up to the manufacturers of those specific coolers to kind of come up with a new backplate and possibly issue them to existing AM4 users, hopefully. In any case, we are really impressed with what Ryzen 7000 series has to offer and it does live up to what AMD claims. And more importantly, efficiency is really at its best at the lower TDP states. The only real concern as a consumer right now will really be the price and value. No matter how you slice it, it will be expensive as an early adopter of the new platform, especially with DDR5 pricing and whatnot. So if you're willing to fork out that much, by all means, go ahead. But if not, it might be prudent to wait, not just because of the price, but we have also yet to see what Team Blue has to offer. Now if you've watched up to this point, we really thank you for your support. This is the first time that we are really going full in with desktop processors, reviews and whatnot, so we definitely do not have that big of a sample base to kind of do comparisons, but even so, we hope that what we have shared with you gave you a little bit of insight and much more. Hopefully, we can do more of such things in the future. So definitely do give this video a like, subscribe to us if you want to see more. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Till the next one. See ya. Thank <laughs> you.